So it's Friday morning, we're here for testing tune, testing out the car. The weather is not ideal for today. We were hoping, you know, to get some more dry track runs out, but you know, we gotta gotta do what we can. So we're gonna send the car out for testing tune, see how it does, try a couple different lines and then see where we're at. This I think weekend will be a lot to do with the different types of braking, threshold, trail braking, dusting. Um, just kind of getting those down instead of just you know off on. <laughs> gotta gotta get that habit out of <laughs> out of the way. Um, but yeah, really just focusing on braking and braking when you need to and not when you need to. So getting that down. <laughs> All right, so this is our car. Driving in the rain is a little bit of a balancing act to our. Um, we have an advantage because we're front wheel drive. So in a Miata, for example, when you accelerate, all that weight goes right to the rear. Right. It lifts your steering wheels off the ground effectively and gives you a little bit of wiggle like this. You're still gonna have that same effect in the front wheel drive car, but the impact is less on it. Right. So from a competitive standpoint, you can put the car on an area of the track that maybe a Miata or BRZ or M3, something in the same class as us, won't be able to do because they have this much weight transfer and we have this much weight transfer. Right. Now for braking, the inverse is gonna be true. We have a front wheel drive, front engine car with nothing in the rear from a weight perspective. So when we brake, the car's gonna go like this. Yeah. And your rear wheels are gonna have less grip. Now, Mid-Ohio is a very slick track, so we'll probably be feeling ABS a lot, but that's why it's gonna be super important that we have all this weight transfer on the front wheels. If you're trying to turn and brake, what's gonna happen? Kick out from yep, the back. Yep, because all that weight's right on top, so you got nothing in the, in the back steering. Mm -hmm. So we're going to shave off some braking while we go out for our shakedown session and see how the car feels and try to establish what is the right angle. And that's it. I'm thinking about turn one, and normally I'd take turn one on the inside really close to that curbing. Right. But there's going to be a lot of rubber mm -hmm. there because that's where everyone else is gone. Mm -hmm. So I'll take it a little bit outside, but not so far outside that the whole car is offline. I just want to put two tires. Two tires in the roughed up pavement should be enough grip. Should be like half on the line, half on the, the race line, and half on the rain line? Yeah. Okay. All right, so there we're washing out. Right. And then this asphalt, or this new pavement, oh, it's so much grip. Like you feel how many G's we're pulling, and now I gotta straighten it out. So notice how I'm going faster every lap? Yeah. Not trying to put a hero lap in here. A, we're just doing a shakedown, but B, you gotta get some heat in the tires, especially in the rain. Yeah, for sure. So I'm breaking early, rev match in the downshift, breaking early, coming out to this little outside patch, hooking up. Gotcha. So, We've been running the classroom wet line, right. where they just tell you get offline, put power in when it's safe. Now we're going to do the same procedure. We're gonna stay offline. We're gonna tuck everything um, in so we make the track shorter, and we'll see how that feels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it catches it on the outside there. Try this one. And not so much over there, there's definitely too much rubber. But here we go, we're gonna try the Mike Joe puddle. Oh man. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, so sorry. Uh, yeah, you didn't get didn't any of think that, about did you? that. No, I mean a little bit on my arm. It's fine, it mostly got the door, but it'll come in when we go around this turn. Check my mirror, because we're making the transition. Get on that dry. Good with the point. Nice. All right, now we're offline. So we gotta scrub our speed offline. And it's probably gonna fade out to the grip. There we go. Now you feel the grip. Power off. Man, that H&R suspension is just so smooth through here. Like, I don't feel, you know, dangerous at all. Like, right. it's not overly snappy. It's keeping it planted. It's rebound it's is nice. Loose. So HPD2 is going to focus a lot of um, its time on braking. Okay. 
You got threshold, yeah. which is sort of that easy on the pedal. You got dusting, which is what you use in turn one when we're at full speed. Right. Because you just set a little bit of the weight on the nose for the weight transfer. Going back to that water bottle example. And then you have trail braking. Okay, yeah, we didn't really, t I don't think we talked about that one much. Yeah, trail braking is a little bit um, more in, uh, advanced because it's sort of how you ride the brakes to make the rear end of the car do what you want. Think of it like pulling the e-brake in drifting, except more control. Gotcha. Because you're modulating the pedal to keep that rear end coming around. And um, it's more advanced because if you're not ready for it, the rear end will come all the way around 360 degrees. Right. But if you uh, practice it and get ready for it, you're able to brake later, deeper, because you're shedding some of your braking off while you're turning as opposed to all the braking then the turn right now you're definitely going to shy away from trail braking in the rain because for obvious reasons you don't want too much rotation right you're going to definitely use threshold braking and you're definitely going to be dusting the brakes right so we're here saturday morning at mid-ohio um waiting to go out for my warm-up laps about a 15 minute session Chris is out there now for the TT warm-up, um, so the car should hopefully be pretty warm by the time I have it. But it'll be my first time on the track, so you know, warm myself up, get back into the swing of things. Um, and then for HPDE 2, we went to the classroom, kind of did our first introductions. I'm not sure who my instructor is going to be yet. Um, they do kind of a partial, so I could be with someone. And if I don't have someone, I'm sure Chris will go with me. It'll be um, kind of a learning curve to go from, you know, being with Brian for the first time and getting used to him and his instruction. He's just going to be in the back of my mind the whole time, like, track out, track out, check in. Um, so I know I'll, that'll be a learning curve to get used to someone else and, and their teaching style. But I'm sure it's going to go well. I'm excited. All right, give him some room and we'll try the dry braking zone. Move over half a car. There you are, yep. How's that feel? Good. Okay, keep it tight. How's that feel? Good, so far. Okay, no slipping? No, not All that right. I can tell. Yeah, I think we're dry line now. Okay. <laughs> oh, there. There we go. That was a good turn in now to have that kick in. It's a little bit still. Okay. Then just keep keep running the wet-ish line, you know, two tires. Keep moving it in as it gets drier. Mm -hmm. So how, what do you think of that one? Um, feeling pretty good. I um, think you're a little heavy with the brakes. Okay. Um, but not, you know, you're not motion up or anything, <laughs> but um, just think of like what you were talking in class, right? Like threshold is not just Boom, brakes. Right. You can squeeze them in. And uh, these hawk pads are really bitey. Right. They're doing their job. Mm. So just um, pay attention to it. You know, not bad at all. You know what I mean? I don't want you to take that as, uh, oh my gosh. But, you know, if I had to critique something, yeah. it would just be a, a little too bitey with the brakes. Yeah, uh, I'm basically sitting right seat for her today uh, as the instructor. Um, she has the rain line down really well. Uh, she feels calm, she feels collected, she's up looking ahead at the next turn instead of staring at the apex that she's about to attack. Um, yeah, nothing but positive things there. Actually, I'm really impressed so far. So like when you're coming in here, through here, yeah. and you're braking, where do you shift? Um, I shift in the braking zone. I get my downshift in before I start turning. Gotcha. And what I don't know, because we're not dry and at pace yet, but what I don't know is if that's a fourth gear turn in this car or a third gear turn. And I'm hoping to find out tomorrow. Well, I took it at fourth, I think, the last lap, but I usually do it in three. Most of the drivers in one have instructors with them for every session, every lap that, that they're out there. 
Once they move to two, they're expected to be able to drive solo. They do get instruction, but usually only once, maybe twice throughout the weekend. Uh, the instructors are, are out on track and they observe them from outside the car. Uh, we are getting them ready to move up to HBD3 and our end goal is to get them ready for either time trial or race. They need to be comfortable in working any part of the track. Uh, they need to be comfortable at any speed, any weather, and they also need to start to learn to be comfortable to work in groups. Again, in HPD 3 and 4, time trial and race, you'll be wor working with groups of 3, 4, 5, 8, 10 around you, and we start them off with simply one car around them and we take the crawl, walk, run approach and we build them up to that ability and we'll do things like force passing uh, by reversing the order of the grid so the slow cars are in the front, the faster in the back and then we'll also do offline drills where we force them to drive on parts of the track which they ordinarily wouldn't. Safety is also is always number one. Uh, we This is an inherently unsafe sport and we try to make it as safe as possible. Most of it is by building up the situational awareness of the drivers so that they spend a lot of time looking outside the car aware of the drivers around them. They also get comfortable with the drivers they drive with so they're familiar with other drivers and how they drive and how, where they brake and where where they turn so that we make this fairly unsafe environment as safe as possible. I mean, what happens is you, you put a, a really abrupt change, you know, into these contact unbalance patches. It, right. Yeah, and, and unbalance it, and you can, I mean, you can induce, you can induce slide that way. Mm -hmm. So, so you're saying, he told you in our last session when you turn in, he's like, you really need to, you need to turn it quicker than you were doing before. Yeah. Because when I was coming in to like say the madness, I was like, oh, I know it's coming, and I'm like going like this, and he's like, wait it out and then go. Yeah, yeah, and, and I mean, I thought in madness you were doing, you were doing okay. Um, so that one there, yeah, I, I, I really didn't see too much of an issue there. The, the thing, the thing that I would, I would try to do is I'm trying to think of which corners I think I would say to work on the, work on the most. I, it, like at the end of the back stretch, I don't think we went through there. Twice the same way. <laughs> Darn. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, because last session we were pretty consistent. And she's like, you, you've been consistent every yeah. run, so it's funny. You say, okay. Say okay. that too. <laughs> yeah, and it's just a different. It's it's just a different perspective. It, right. I mean, sometimes we were turning a little late, a little early, um, but but try to try to get where you're. It's like the same point every time, mm -hmm. and <clears throat> and then you can start working on the working on the other stuff. Yeah, last night, um, car performed beautifully, and then on the final session, Ellen brought it in and was parked with her instructor um, doing a review of the session, and the car started to overheat. Um, so we pulled it back up here, let it cooled off, and uh, started to dive in. After we got the intake off, I was able to find that the plug for the radiator had just completely fallen off. It looks like the clasp was broken. So we fit those two back together, um, zip tied them, so hopefully they stay tight. And um, just now this morning, I, you know, I let it sit around without moving and it seems to be holding right at 200, but we'll keep an eye on it. Um, make sure that we don't you know, have a blown fuse or something that we miss. We check the fuses, we check the relays, we check the wiring. But uh, yeah, it'll just be a time will tell kind of situation on the weekend. This morning we also switched to new tires. So we went from the Falcons to the Goodyear Supercar 3Rs. Um, they are very grippy once they have heat and not grippy at all when they don't have heat, which I read all about and then still um, tried to send it too soon. And we got a little sideways uh, early on that lap. So. Um, good learning though. Uh, I'm starting to chase some tire pressures and temperatures for the weekend. 
We'll see where we want everything. This is a really tight right hand turning track. So our left side is probably gonna need to be loaded up with a little more pressure and our right side could probably lose a little, uh, but we're gonna track it and make adjustments and go from there. Yeah, I got a crack in the downpipe. Uh, we're gonna keep an eye on that too in between each of our runs, bring it in and see where it's at. What we can't tell is if it's been cracked the whole time we've had it and we've just noticed or uh, is it fresh. Um, Either way, it's a little bit risky, but again, you're at the track and you got to kind of figure out what you want to do. You know, we'll, we'll kill the day if, if the crack gets worse and something becomes obviously wrong, but otherwise we're going to uh, keep pushing and um, order up a new downpipe when we get back to the office. brakes are working right now and so I really picked up the speed on that back straightaway yeah and that's why I got like overconfident in madness I was like I'm just gonna push it Chris can do it I can do it <laughs> you know the car is capable right wreck, so you did it so far <laughs> That's looking good. It looks like we're doing the passing drill on the outlap. So you see all the cars moving up and shifting at apex and as well in the straight. Normally HPD2 is not allowed to pass in the turns. So this is their first attempt at passing in turns. going for the pass in at apex tucked in nicely lots of room good power on moving up through the pack yeah that was perfect that's exactly what you want to see that confidence to pass on the inside and at apex they're going 50 percent speed but you have to learn somewhere and this is where you learn okay so here they come through Okay, nice pass on the outside, Ellen. Now out there, she doesn't have a whole lot of grip and that's the point of the exercise. And now she'll come in on the inside. She'll get around that SS. And only leaving them a car width of room. That's a perfect pass. Left enough room for the inside car and that's the point of the drill. So we're out here practicing what safe passing is like. And again, they're only going 50% speed. But when you're offline, everything is different. You have different grip, you have different throttle application. So you practice it at this slow speed through the NASA classroom activities. And then when you're out there hooning it for real, you get a good sense of where you need to be, how the car will respond, and you just know what's gonna be planted and what's gonna slip and how much room you need. It's just a really good way to practice safe driving in a competition situation. You did everything right, that was really good. Okay. Good apex passing, good um, control, good awareness of the situation around you. That was, everything was really good. Cool. Yeah, that, um, 
I guess it, it's been feeling faster because my RPMs are higher at yeah. different times than I'm used to, so. <laughs> yep, you're just That's getting different. faster every lap and every session. It's crazy. <laughs> it's gonna be good, it's gonna be really good. Did you feel good? Did you feel like you were doing well or? Yeah, like we were just talking about um, coming into the threshold breaking along after the straight. It starts to be slippery now and it didn't used to be, so. Picking up speed. Picking up speed indeed. <laughs> I'm super happy, I'm really proud of you. <laughs> and, and your reaction was very positive on the hill over there so yeah she did everything right she had really good control at apex um passing and and being passed and maintaining line that's the most important part is being predictable for the other drivers around you you want them to know that you're going to be in your spot and you leave that car with to let them buy right and then vice versa they know they only got to give you a car they're not giving you 10 cars they're not giving you a whole track because that is how you're going to be driving the whole time right. it was really good and if if you're just dancing at, you know at, at braking zone right before turning it's perfect well it was like there and then some of the corners i started to feel it more than normal and mm -hmm. i was just like this is different mm -hmm. that's because you're going faster good job Hey, um, how's work? We need a GTI radiator. <laughs> um, you guys are really far away though, so. Mm -hmm.